Hello, it's Tracker Joe, and welcome to another tutorial. Something that's been heavily requested was that I do a submarine tutorial, and that's what I'm here to do. Uh, I have a test submarine here to start, and I will like showcase, like I will slap together a little bit of something for you, and just to show. Now there is like one way to do this, and you may notice I have this, it's not a, like the Forerunner is not a submarine. Uh, give me a second. General purpose altitude. I'm just going to set you to... Because the Forerunner is too heavy to float on its own, well maybe without these balloons or even with the balloons now we have a submarine and it's leveling off uh, because it uses a hydrojet system I'm able to get it to uh, stay a specific depth under, under the water this would be negative 50 meters and that's just one thing I kind of wanted to point out is because of like uh you could just make it like you would a normal uh thruster craft or like airship and just have the pid system hold the craft under that is what i did with the forerunner and and now i guess you could say it's a submarine except it's not going to work very well as a submarine because it's not made to be a submarine or you're, we can do it the way that I had uh, decided to show you and give you a tutorial on, which is You're in control now. to have the ship dive. Like this craft will uh, pitch over to a uh, slight angle, and any forwards motion gets translated into like partially into downwards motion, and so this craft will eventually. Uh, reach the, a certain level and then it'll like switch back and forth uh, between being level and diving again and this is done with ACVs anyway I had gone through and kind of like demonstrated those things so now is time to actually work on a sub first thing you are probably going to want and it's just a no-brainer you already saw my PID tutorial. I am going to be using a PID, but not in a way that really makes sense. I'm just going to have a roll PID. These are both set up. Uh, roll reverse right hand side, roll left hand side. This is just going to keep me from flipping. And now we actually work on the system. So I am going to put down a PID, and this is going to be a uh, itch hydrofoil PID. Before I do this, so, and actually a couple things. A flaw that I have noticed: this thing does absolutely need to have a little its forward thrust up front. The reason is simple: because the center of mass is far back. You need like something to pull you into the water and so that's what that's for and another thing is I'm going to be using a pair of ACVs that override each other so I do have like a paste that just sets the effect range to two you always want that to be set to two if you only want it to affect the thing touching it so we're going to do that now, now what we do is add, I believe we want a hydrofoil, put it on its side. This is going to tell you if it is, uh, like this is going to tell you which one is overriding the other. And that's going to be extremely important because you want you to have your main case here then you want your secondary case to be there. Of course, that's not strictly necessary with the way we're going to be using it for this. In fact, 
We're probably not going to be using them to override each other at all. But it is just something I'm going to show anyway because I am using ACBs and you will find plenty of stuff where this trick is useful. So say that both of these are active and just say one of them is, well, I'm not going to set this one just for a moment. So one of them is set to have hydrofoils at a 45 degree angle. And then the other one has the hydrofoil set up to be no angle. And these could be any, could just both be things affecting the same thing. This is basically keeping it off. So whenever this, because, like as we can see here, this hydrofoil isn't moved because this one is set to zero. But this one's also trying to get it to move to 45 degrees. So to, we can deduce from that that this control block is the one controlling the ACB. Well, the hydrofoil, sorry. So using this knowledge, we can then put in a PID. And I'm just going to uh, clear these by pasting in the nearly empty one. This is just going to be pitch hydrofoil. And I'll set this test stimulus 1. Test stimulus 1 has nothing in it. So I'll just set it to, I don't know, negative uh, 15 degrees. As you can see, it is adjusting to negative 15 degrees. Well, it's going to adjust to hit negative 15 degrees. And the longer you spend not at that angle, the more time. This is actually something that I would recommend just turning the derivative time and integral time off on. And it will adjust on its own. Uh, like, you are probably going to want higher gain if you do that, though. Not that high. Something like... I guess, I guess like half of that would be enough. So it would adjust basically to keep it at the correct angle. So that's something to know. So this is set to try to keep the craft at negative 15 degrees. And this is going to basically say if our pitch angle is less than negative 15, which, that's that's always nice when that happens, but... Uh, so it's set to negative 15. Uh, we want to set the angle of these to something like 0, which in this craft, because it's ever so slightly more buoyant than it is... Uh, Heavy, it's going to like rebound and uh, start to like curve upwards again and so we can basically say so it's actually going to be more like altitude so where is this uh, I actually don't remember where altitude activate when altitude is less than negative I guess 50 I have it set to 25 for the other one. Uh, and then just set if the altitude is greater than a certain range. So, so if altitude is greater than uh, negative, not negative 500, but negative, uh, let's say 45. So we have like a dead zone. And this means that they don't interact. So what I showed you earlier was kind of useless in this case. But again, it's useful if you want like a condition like uh, like enforcing a certain angle. And then you want to have one other condition that just like enforces another condition on it. So say you want it to just get down to a certain depth. And then force it to stay at that depth. That's sort of what I'm saying. Uh, so basically, 
we're going to do the same thing here. Set this general purpose PID, and the set point of this PID is just going to be zero. And we need to make sure to set this. So this one is just going to be zero. This is actually saying if we're above that, then we want negative uh, 15 as our value. And as you can see, our system is adjusting to that already. Set to negative 15 because we are not at least negative uh, 45. And this will take over the moment we're below 50, in which case it's just going to swap to keeping an angle of zero. We could even have like the angle be like slightly higher than that, but because of the way buoyancy works, like you are going to have to adjust this, by the way. Like you just want it to maintain a certain depth, really. And these are buoyant. So there's one other thing that I am forgetting. I'm just going to place, I don't know, I'm going to be lazy and put an RTG. Just have a battery and an electric engine like this. And I will just save this as test sub 1 just so that people can see it. And then what I'm going to do is this thing's now in the water. We're going to tell it to patrol over here. And as you can see it has changed angle to negative 15 and is diving now. Now you could tweak this PID. I'm not going to. I'm happy with it the way it is. It seems to be keeping me level enough anyway. I have gone a little bit too overboard with the hydrofoils, but that's fine. So our altitude is slowly increasing. If we wanted, we could set this to be a little more. So negative 20. So if we set this to negative 25, it's going to keep our angle a little more steep. Then we'll be gaining a lot more, but I'm going to set this to negative 20 instead. Just so that we have some forwards momentum. So basically, we have it set to nosedive, and that's what's causing us to uh, dive. Now we are level uh, 50, so we've leveled out to uh, 0.5, and since this ship is actually ever so slightly buoyant, it's going to uh, like it should gain some height. Now, one thing you can do here, and I am actually going to do that real quick. I'm just going to move this back. I am going to do something like this. I'm going to... I guess I'm going to copy this one. Well, it's more like I'm going to copy this one and put it here. And we know this one overrides that one. So we're just going to set this one. We're going to copy this one, paste this one here. But say if it gets to like negative 55, then I want to set that set point to uh, something like uh, 10 degrees. So now if we dove even more, uh, like for example, so if we, so in this case, if we are greater than negative 45, then it's going to start to dive again, which it's doing right now. And if we are uh, less than negative 55, then we, we override this one and have it set to a more upwards angle. And this allows the craft to be like be able to sit at pretty much any height you want. 
and this would actually work uniformly with any system. So you could basically create a module and copy and paste it and then just throw it onto any submarine and it would be able to dive using hydrofoils. So what's going on here? It's it's this is this is not good. So I need to increase the integral time. I need to take this out of the equation because this is probably what's causing it. Right, five. Then this literally just needs to be enough to reduce this. So as you can see, the oscillations are going away. So that's what we want. And so its angle shouldn't be as extreme uh, now. In fact, it's going to stay at the angle that it should be, uh, which would be roughly zero. And because it's ever so slightly buoyant, it's going to actually gain altitude here. So I technically don't need this uh, PID, but I have this just in case it is, for example, I guess I could just make an example right here. If I just weighed this thing with lead beams and just did something like, I don't know, say for some reason, like you probably want to have, like this is probably going to cause it to gain depth, yes. So with this, it would actually uh, shift its angle. And I guess it's actually a little bit too heavy. Yeah, it is actually just a little bit too heavy for... So you could set that to a more aggressive angle if you had to. What's going on, by the way? Oh, I see what's happening here. No, what you would have to do in this case is you would have to also have PIDs to shut this one off. I see. Okay, I believe that I have a system in place that'll work. Let's just test first. And I'm just going to set you to, I don't know, you're going here. So now we're doing our dive again, and it should just go by the same logic, honestly. So this ACB, so ba like basically I took advantage of the positioning here. So this PID controller is just going to control my pitch, and it's going to try to keep my pitch a specific angle, which it is doing perfectly, actually. Like very smooth, like hardly oscillating, as you can see here. Like very slight, and it's not actually causing any degree changes. Well, it is, but you would fine tune this depending on the craft, so I wouldn't worry too much. Like this wasn't properly calibrated anyway. So, yeah. Now it's going to hit negative uh, 50. Oh, it's already hit. Yeah, now it's negative 50. It's made a change and it's adjusting its altitude to zero. And so now it's finally settled into its new position. It's going to smooth out and its oscillations are going to go away. Which it is. I'm actually kind of pleased at that. So now it's going to continue to rise. But, uh, so these extra, and so this is not going to get, get into play. These aren't going to get into play. But this one did technically, since the altitude got greater than negative 50, it swipe, uh, it swapped the ACB, uh, on, but that doesn't do anything because they're already on. 
And I was able to put this here because it would turn this one on, which we always want on. So that's never a problem. This one, however, turns this ACB off. And so it can't interfere with this ACB until it's fulfilled the condition to turn it back on, which this condition no longer applies anyway. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to add some weight to it. And not metal blocks, but like, not lightweight alloy, but like lead beams. Let's just see. We are now actually losing altitude now. So what should happen, and I am going to adjust this one to be more, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It's negative 55 now. Negative 56. So now this ACB is disabled and we are at 20 degrees facing upwards. And then we hit, uh, then we hit, uh, neg uh, then we hit an altitude greater than negative 50 and it set the set point, it set this one back to enabled and consequently this on accident and it was able to regain control of its altitude. So if I wait a bit it's about to shift, we'll see a shift right there. It's going to oscillate for a few seconds because the system doesn't like having to change depth. Or am I... I think it bugs out when I'm looking into it. Yeah, it is. So I'm going to look at this a little bit more. I just want to like see, is this actually working the way I want it to? Uh, that way I can kind of like showcase to you guys. The negative 53, negative 54, and it's going to show up as disabled. Uh, negative 55, and then it's going to get greater to this. On negative 56, disabled. And then our angle goes to positive 20. And we hit above 50, so this is enabled again. And we are controlling our angle properly. So I would say this is actually a successful design, and this means that I now have a universal uh, system. And if you were clever enough to reproduce this as I was doing the tutorial, which I'm sure some of you are, and I'm also sure that some of you are clever enough to know that I'm going to be putting a link to the workshop with this little test craft in it. Like, yeah, you could also like just grab that and that'll work too. And you can then take it apart and see what I've done you taking advantage of various mechanics to kind of like manipulate the logic. This new feature, which I didn't actually anticipate needing, but actually has makes this so much easier to do. I'm happy. I'm happy that Nick put this in because being able to turn these on and off made it makes it very easy to make more complicated PID systems where there are more than one type of uh, system, well, more than one type of, uh, I guess, uh, of like condition for the same thing. And so I basically have it to stay at a specific height, but then it has a condition for when it's below that height. So yeah, anyway. Uh, this has been uh, Submarine Tutorial 1. This is just one of many ways to do submarines, and I am going to be showing all of them. I already showed you at the start of the video one of the possibilities, so I'm not going to cover using hydrojets to hold it under the water. That's just boring. Uh, the next style I'm going to cover is going to be the... Uh, I believe it would be the uh, air pump style.
So I will see you then.